All right, welcome. In this video, we're gonna be solving some exponential and log equations. And honestly, I hope this video is a bit of a letdown for you. Uh, I hope you find that, wait a second, I've been doing this all along. I already know how to solve log and exponential equations. Uh, but you know, I'm just gonna show you how this all works. I'm gonna need a pen though. So the first thing we're going to do is go back to our fundamental identities because those are going to be so important in this lesson. I mean, it could not be more important. So log base b of b to the x is equal to x. That's, you know, one of our two fundamental identities. What this is saying is, okay, what exponent do I put on b to get b to the x? Oh, just x. Okay, and then this one, b to the log base b of x, this is also just going to equal x. This is a little trickier, but log base b of x, let's just think about the log. That's the exponent we put on b to get x. So if we put that exponent on b, we should get x. Okay, and it's the same thing over here with natural log of e to the x. That's base e. So base e of e to the x is going to be x. And e to the natural log x is also going to be x. All of these things, they can just come back x. Okay, so we're going to be using that. And what we're going to do to solve these equations, we're just going to kind of approach this the same way we always approach the idea of solving an equation. We're going to be fair to both sides. Okay, anything we do to one side, we're going to do the other. So to get this variable down out of the exponent, the most efficient way is going to be to take the log with base 2 of both sides of this equation. Because if two numbers are equal, and I put them both inside log, I should get the same number back. So I'm going to take log base 2 of both sides. Log base 2 of 2 to the x equals log base 2 of 10. Okay. And then, OK, well, using the fundamental identity, this is just going to be x. So this is x equals log base 2 of 10. And maybe you're sitting there thinking, dude, I already knew that. Like, I know how to change a, an equation from exponential to logarithmic form. And that's why I trained you on that, was so that you would have that, you know, the, kind of that intuition. But in the long run, you know, in pre-calculus calculus, when you're encountering an exponential equation and you need to solve it, and you haven't just been thinking about logs continuously in your math class, it might be a better strategy to just do the same thing on both sides. Take a log of both sides, take both sides, or take a number to both sides power. That'll be the next one. Okay, so the exact value is log base 2 of 10. Okay, that's what I'm telling you. This is what we would call an exact value. An approximation would be a decimal we could obtain using the calculator. So let me go grab a calculator. All right, so I brought out a scientific calculator that doesn't have a log base button. And, you know, maybe, uh, I'm saying, maybe you've got a TI-84 and you know how to use log base. That's fine. We're really not going to do much approximation in this class. But if you did have a TI-83 or some machine that could only do natural logs or base 10 logs, I'm going to remind you of the change of base formula. So I'm going to call for a fraction on this calculator, and I'm going to type in natural log of 10. And basically, any calculator that's at least scientific is going to have a natural log button. Divided by natural log of 2, we're going to divide that and get 3.322. So that would be my approximation. 322. All right. Another equation, e to the x equals 15. Okay. I'm going to need to take a log of both sides to do that. Okay, because the base is e, I need the base of my log to be e, and that's natural log. So natural log of e to the x is going to equal natural log of 15. And we just set it right up there, up a little higher on your note sheet. Natural log of e to the x, that's just x. So x equals the natural log of 15. So the exact value is natural log of 15. The approximate value, I mean, we need to bring this guy in here and just clear that out. Natural log, where, where, where am I? Natural log of 15. That's going to be 2.708. That's how we're solving a basic exponential equation, where it's not something that we can rewrite as, like, I don't know what power of, of e 15 is. That's, that's the whole point of using a log, is that we, we don't know exactly the exponent, so we can use calculator, or we'll just leave it exact, and say it's that special exponent. All right, so over here, we've got a couple that are, okay, uh, log equations. And we need to solve these basically by taking an exponent to both sides' power. Or, no, making both sides the exponent of some number. OK, I, I didn't say that well. With log base 2, what we're going to do is we're going to take 2 to both sides power. So if this number is equal to 7, then 2 to this number should equal 2 to the 7. And this is one of our fundamental identities. 2 to the log base 2 of a thing is just going to give me that thing. OK, so x plus 3 is 2 to the 7. and well, I could say x, I could subtract 3 from both sides, and it's negative 3 plus 2 to the 7. 
but I think that you can figure out what two to the seven is. If you're in my room, you can consult with that little poster that's up in the front, has uh, powers of two and square numbers and cube numbers and all those special numbers we're supposed to know. But if you aren't in class, you're at home or you know, something like that, uh, you can do some finger counting. Two is two to the one. Four, eight, 16, 32, 64, 128. Just keep doubling. Okay, so that's 128 minus three, that'll be equal to 125. And that's an exact value, right? I solved for it, it's, I didn't round it or anything. Okay. But this one, this one will have an exact and an approximate answer. So if I'm trying to get the rid of the log with base e, I need to take e to both sides power. So I'm gonna take e to the natural log of x squared, and that's gonna equal e to the five. Okay. And so again, e to the natural log of a thing just gives me that thing. So this is x squared equals e to the five. And if I'm gonna solve for x, I'm gonna take the square root of both sides. And remember, taking the square root of both sides of an equation, that's where we need to bring in a plus minus. Because really what we're doing here is we're taking the square root of x squared, which is the absolute value of x. And if the absolute value of x equals the square root of e to the five, the x is either plus or minus. We talked about absolute value a long time ago in this class. Uh, said it and almost forgot to write the plus minus. Okay, there we go. Now, if you want to call this plus or minus e to the five halves, uh, well, I might suggest you do that. Okay, that is, those are exact answers. Okay, log equations can kick back extraneous solutions. So what I say is if you get more than one answer, you should probably check. Okay, um, really you should probably check all of your solutions to log equations, but we're not going to run into too many where we run it, where we have an extraneous solution. And I'll show you one where you have to apply a property, and that's really, I think, the main cause of them here. Uh, what was I going to say? This is an exact value. An approximate value would be, let me zoom out a little bit and bring in a calculator, would be if we had uh, actually found that with a decimal. Yeah, so I wanted to show you that usually the e to the whatever button is right above the, or it's like with the natural log. So I'm gonna press second to get to e to the x. e to the five halves is 2.5, and I get 12.182. Okay. An approximation would be plus or minus 12.182. I never even went and said why. Okay, negative 12.182 is fine. The thing I can't do is take the log of a negative number, or take the log of zero. And that's not going to happen. For that number first, it'll be positive, and then I can take the natural log of it. OK, let's move on. Let's do some more examples. All right, now we need to move forward and do some where you have to do a little bit more solving than just take the log of both sides or take some number to both sides power. This one, I mean, it's, it's not that much more, but I'm just going to give you my general advice. And that's going to be isolate the exponential. You know, when we go to solve a log equation that has more steps, it's going to be isolate the log. So what I need to do is get rid of this plus 3 that's attached, right? I want e to the 2x equals some number so I can take the natural log of both sides. So I'm going to start by subtracting 3 from both sides. So 12 minus 3 is 9. e to the 2x plus 3 minus 3 would just be e to the 2x. Okay. Now that I've got the exponential isolated, which I might I'm kind of say, hey, look, here, I did it right there. Now I can take a log of both sides. So I'm going to take a natural log to get rid of e to the 2x. And that's going to equal natural log of 9. This means, OK, natural log of e to a thing is just that thing. So that's 2x equals natural log of 9. And if I'm solving for x, I could divide both sides of this equation by 2. And I'd get x equals half of the natural log of 9. Now, if you want to apply a log property and say that this is the natural log of 3, be my guest. You're no more right, though. Okay, This is an exact solution, and I'm going to be happy with that if you give it to me. What I'm going to also do is I'm going to show you how to get an approximate solution using a calculator. Um, but that's just not something we're going to need to do very often. 0.5 times the natural log of 9 is going to be 1.099. Now, I've got another example. I'll just copy it in for you. You don't need to watch me copy that. All right, so this one's got a log in it. But otherwise, it's working pretty much the same, you know, like we've kind of like the one I just did. So the advice is going to be isolate the log. So I'm going to start by getting rid of this 3. I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides, and I'll have negative 4. Did I copy that wrong? No. OK. Negative 4 log x. 
And now when we see log and there's no base indicated, we know that means base 10. And so I like to copy that in just to remind myself. Negative 4 times the base 10 log of x is equal to 11 minus 3 is 8. Now I need to solve for, um, what am I saying? I need to solve for the log by dividing both sides by negative 4. That's what I'm saying. 8 divided by negative 4 would be negative 2. Now at this point, now I've got it isolated. Now that I've got that, I can take 10 to both sides power. And I'll be able to access x. So x is going to equal 10 to the negative 2, which is the same as 1 over 10 to the positive 2. So that's 1 over 100. That'll be an exact answer. I actually think that 0.01 .01 is also an exact answer, in my view. OK, so those are ones where we had to do a, like, a little bit of solving first before hitting both sides with a log or an exponential. OK, now this equation is one that we're going to have to do something different on. We're going to have to apply a log property first. Okay. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say, OK, I've got the sum of two logs here. I'm not really going to try to like, subtract that over. You could, but I don't think that would be the, the, the best way to solve this efficiently. I'm going to combine these two into a single log by multiplying the arguments. We learned about that last time. So log base 2 of x plus 5 times x minus 3 is going to equal log base 2 of 9. Okay. I'm going to distribute these. So I'll have log base 2 of x squared plus 5x minus 3x is plus 2x minus 15. Okay. If these two things are equal, then I should be able to take 2 to both of their powers and get equal result. OK, and now I'm applying that fundamental identity on both. So I'm going to say x squared plus 2x minus 15 equals 9. So that means that x squared plus 2x minus 15 equals 9. And if I'm seeing different powers of x in the same equation, I have to set the thing to 0. So I'm going to subtract minus 24. And that's going to equal 0. And now I'm going to think to myself, I'm hoping I can solve, I have solved this by factoring, right? Um, if I can, I should be able to think of two numbers that multiply to negative 24 while adding to positive 2. So I'm seeing 6 and 4. I'm thinking positive 6, negative 4 to make sure that uh, I add to a positive number. OK, so x plus 6 times x minus 4, that's going to equal 0. OK, and then. I'm going to say, all right, well, that's going to be true if this factor is 0. So that would be x equaling negative 6. Or if that factor was equal to 0, which would be x equals 4. All right. Now at this point, I've got multiple solutions. It's a log equation. I'm telling you that extraneous solutions can't happen. And we've got one. Okay, remember that log of a negative number and log of 0 are undefined, regardless of what the base is. So when I plug in x equals negative 6, What's going to happen is I'm going to have the log base 2 of negative 1 plus the log base 2 of negative 9. Neither of these numbers are defined. So we can't just add two numbers up that are undefined and get log base 2 of 9. That's not going to work. Really, you can see um, that, what was I thinking here? Uh, that's the mistake. Uh, it's a price you pay having your email up in the back. I was looking at the screen. I saw an email come in that I probably didn't want to see. And OK, so I minimized that. OK, oh yeah, over here. You might be led to believe that, OK, I could combine this with a log property. But I don't, that property only works when both logs actually exist, right? Okay, so that's what I've got to say about that. Uh, be careful with ones like this where you have to apply a log property first, because occasionally they will kick extraneous solutions to you. So you just got to be aware of that. Oh, and because x equals negative 6 is, uh, this is undefined, oh, caught myself. That means this is extraneous. Okay, So x equals 4 is my only solution here. All right, so I've got one more example for you that's going to work differently from the others that we've worked so far here. 6e to the 2x plus 6e to the x minus 12 equals 0. I want you to think, like, 
How do you think you're going to solve this one? Okay. And it's kind of what I did in class. I was like, hey, anybody see how you're going to solve that? If so, keep that to yourself, right? And so then I'm going to just kind of like rewrite this a little bit um, because e to the 2x is the same as e to the x squared. That's going to be essential for us. I'm just going to remind you of why that's true. You know, power of a power, we're going to multiply the exponents there. Okay, so if I had 6 times e to the x squared plus 6 times e to the x minus 12 equals 0. Maybe now I, I mean, I'd say maybe now I've got a few more people that are going to see how I'm going to attack this. But if you don't, no big deal. We've run into equations like this. We've tried to solve them at various objects in this class. Um, but maybe none like this. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to let t equal e to the x. And if you've been with me throughout the course, you, now you probably see where it's going. We're going to be factoring, right? So that means, and in fact, since I already did this with the exponent property, I'm just going to say 6t squared plus 6t minus 12 is going to equal 0. So I've got 6t squared plus 6t minus 12 equaling 0. And this is factorable. We've got a greatest common factor of 6. Let's start there. 6 times t squared plus t minus 2 equals 0. And then I'm going to factor the thing in parentheses. I can think of two numbers that add to negative, or multiply to negative 2 while adding to positive 1. It would be positive 2, negative 1. So 6 times t plus 2 times t minus 1 is going to equal 0. And then I'm going to solve for t. Okay, 6 can never equal 0, so that's not going to contribute to any solutions. t plus 2 could equal 0 if t was equal to negative 2. And t minus 1 could equal 0 if t was equal to 1. But don't be, don't be thinking you're done with the problem here, right? We're looking for values of x that make this equation true. And these are t values, right? Nobody said anything about t. We were the ones that brought t up. So I'm going to go over here now and go back to let t equal e to the x. So if t equals e to the x, then e to the x needs to equal negative 2 or 1. Okay. Now, if you're going to try to solve both of these equations with your eyes, then I don't know what else to say to this. I'm proud of you. Like you have been listening in my class. Like there are some equations that we can solve, right? e to the x equals 1. That's going to be x equals 0. This has no solution because e is a positive number, and a positive number to any power is positive. So it's never going to come back negative. I admire that, the wanting to solve it with your eyes, if that's how you're feeling. But if you want, we can just solve it by taking a log of both sides, right? So I'm going to take natural log of both sides of this equation. And that, that's bad news, right? That's undefined. Okay? So this is not going to contribute a solution. Then over here, what I could do is I could take the natural log of both sides. Okay. Natural log of 1 is the exponent I put on e to get 1, and that's 0, okay. which is actually the exact same thought process you went through when you were solving this one with your eyes. Okay. So either way, x equals 0 is going to be the only real solution to this equation, and that's going to be the, all the examples I've got for you. What I'd say is that if you are still feeling a little shaky on this and want to move on with me to what page 23, I'm going to record that as a separate video, and you could probably click up here around right now and get taken to that. That'll be all. Thanks for watching.